Where are property prices crashing the hardest? Where do you definitely not want to be investing right now? Well, I'll be using HomeTrack's city level data to answer that question, starting by looking at the worst performers over the last three months. So looking at the bottom five over the last three months, there's a clear cluster down on the South Coast, Portsmouth, Bournemouth, and Southampton. I'm gonna assume that could be due to people overpaying during lockdown. You can see how being on the beach just a couple of hours from London, very attractive at the time, but now that boom has passed and maybe more people are going back the other way because they're having to go back to the office, prices are likely to come down. Rounding out the bottom five are Bristol and Cambridge. These might have seen a similar effect, plus they were really expensive to start with and had grown far more than the UK average over the past few years, giving them further to fall when mortgage rates started going up. But three months isn't much data, so let's switch to looking at the last 12 months and we'll see some interesting broader themes appearing. So now Aberdeen is down there, and Aberdeen is a really unique market. You can see it just doesn't perform like the rest of the UK, with prices starting to absolutely plummet in 2016, while the rest of the country just powered on. This is because Aberdeen is so dependent on the oil industry, and the oil price started collapsing in 2015 and bottomed in 2016, which is what caused property to do so badly. So the poor performance of the last 12 months could be for the same reason. The oil price fell sharply from the middle of 2022, which has probably unsettled the market again. Also down there is Belfast, another interesting city. Belfast got absolutely hammered after 2008, and Northern Ireland property prices fell further than any other region by a really long way. And you can see that Belfast prices are nowhere near being back to their previous peak, while the rest of the UK has moved way beyond. And its recent weakness surprises me. Because prices are still low and affordability is relatively good, you'd expect it to be better able to cope with the sudden rise in interest rates than many other regions. So maybe it will and this is just a blip, or maybe there's something else going on that I'm not aware of but I would back Northern Ireland in general and Belfast in particular to actually be one of the better performers over the next few years. We've also got Glasgow down here, which is another mystery, especially given that it's performed worse than Edinburgh over the last 12 months. Given that Edinburgh had been on a major run over the previous few years and the average property price is practically double, 268,000 in Edinburgh compared to 142,000 in Glasgow, I thought Glasgow would be doing a lot better. But something that won't help property prices across the whole of Scotland is rent controls, which we've recorded another video about, which we'll link to down below. Then we've got Cambridge. No mystery here. We saw it on our three months list. It's just a very expensive city. Very nice city, but a very expensive one where prices are getting on for double the UK average. And it was one of the best performers in the COVID boom. So now that boom is over and mortgage rates are starting to bite, especially in more expensive areas, no surprise that's going back the other way. And then there's London. In a way, no surprise at all that London is down here. It's just an exaggerated version of Cambridge. Even more expensive property prices, even more stretched affordability. So of course, it's gonna be hit hard by rising mortgage rates. But London's actually, when you look, been right down there for the last few years. London performed really strongly after the last crash, but since 2016, it's stalled and the rest of the country has performed a lot better. So does that mean that London has now fallen so far behind that it's becoming investable again? And given that it's weak at the moment, they could be buying opportunities. But watch this video next, where I actually did my own data analysis to figure out if London was a good place to invest right now. And the result might surprise you.